Welcome everyone, Matsmas here with you today, and thank you so much for joining me on this video. So, we are going back to the world of artillery, really, with some self-propelled guns, and this vehicle is highly impressive. It's also a vehicle I'm sure you're very well used to. It is the M109A6 Paladin self-propelled howitzer. Yes, we are back into the artillery world, and we've done a few videos in the past, both the AS-90, the SPG-2000, and even the K-9 Thunder from the South Korean military. I thought finally I get to the American Paladin because it is quite a, I guess, historic artillery piece because it's been running for many, many years. So as always guys, what we'll do, we'll talk a little bit about the vehicle itself, its specifications, a bit of an overview, and then my personal opinion on the vehicle as well. Guys, as always, I would really, really appreciate it if you could go check out my Patreon account. YouTube, unfortunately, really does very little in support of military channels. It's just the way it is. Um, unfortunately, they're not family-friendly when you talk about vehicles and military weapons. And uh, it's just really difficult to create content when, you know, you're not given the feedback and, and benefit back from YouTube. It's kind of upsetting and depressing, but it is what it is. And uh, I know you guys really enjoy my content. So if you do wish to support me in any way uh, via donation, then please check out my Patreon account. It would be really appreciated. So let's get started then. The M109A6 Paladin is one of the more advanced variants of the old M109 American self-propelled gun series. The original M109 was developed to produce versions, it is the M109A6 Paladin. The Paladin was originally produced between 1991 and 1999, with around 950 of them built, and that is a lot of artillery, guys. Compared to the older versions of the M109 series, the Paladin is equipped with a sophisticated fire and control and localization system. This heavily modernized element allows it to rapidly aim, and a Paladin can fire within 60 seconds from coming to a complete halt. This ability helps to protect the Paladin from counter-battery fire, as we're already aware, and you've probably seen from many of my previous videos, the shoot and scoot principle is extremely important when it comes to working with self-propelled howitzers. Additionally, the Paladin can fire very advanced munitions such as the M98-2 Excalibur Ultra Precise Extended Range Round that allows the Paladin to perform even danger close fire missions. Basically guys, this round is so precise they can put a round down right next to the troops and hopefully, I mean, honestly, danger close and, and relying on technology is something that I would be pretty nervous about. But you know, if the, the ability is there and they need it, then that's what they can use. And that's quite an impressive round. I haven't really seen much or done much research on it. Maybe I'll do a video on it in the future. The upgraded M284 howitzer has a sustained rate of fire of around 4 rounds per minute, and a maximum range with special ammunition is over 30 kilometers. Now the interesting thing is, is that the Paladin does very very well on its range with the Excalibur round up to 40 kilometers. but compared to some other vehicles it's quite low in the range scale. For instance the Archer FH-77 BWL-52 howitzer does have a maximum range of potentially up to 50 kilometers, Along with the Donaire Artillery Gun Module or AGM, potentially can fire up to 56 kilometers with higher range munitions. There are a few other vehicles that are toppling over that 40 km mark, including the K9 Thunder at a range of roughly 41 to 42 km. The Nora B 52 SP self propelled gun is also ranging up to around 42 km. It's kind of impressive, really, though, that this vehicle is continuing to try and upgrade its systems to allow it to punch out further and further. And as always, guys, that's what the military is trying to do everywhere. Best bang for the buck, and literally best bang for the buck. If they can squeeze a few more kilometers of range out of that shell, or the firing system that's firing the round itself, they're going to do so, and it's not, you know, anything different for the Paladin. The M109A6 Paladin, or rather the M109 series in general, was really not supposed to be serving this long, and numerous replacements were developed at one point or another by the US military. However, the failures to produce a suitable replacement prolonged the service of this venerable vehicle, families, to the 21st century and beyond. While this vehicle has been an extremely successful export item, the Paladin was lately replaced by several notable militaries by competing projects. The British AS-90 and the German Panzerhubitz 2000, I can never say that properly, were some of the contenders against this vehicle. Nevertheless though, an upgrade of the Paladin for the US Army, the M109A7, built on a Bradley chassis, was already approved and so the M109 series will continue to serve, possibly for decades to come. 
Early variants of this vehicle had the short 23 caliber barrel, and this vehicle does have a larger turret than its predecessor. Later versions, including the M109A6 Paladin, have a 39 caliber barrel. The M109 has a crew of six, commander, gunner, driver, and three ammunition members. The hull is made of all welded aluminum armor, which protects, oh, I said aluminum, sorry, those Brits out there, aluminium armor, <laughs> which protects against small arms fire and shell splinters from indirect fire. The driver is seated at the front left of the hull with the power pack to the right and to the turret at the rear. The driver is provided with a single piece hatch cover that opens to the left with three M45 day periscopes in front. These can be covered with small metal flaps to prevent damage. The vehicle is powered by a beautiful Detroit Diesel Model 8V 71T engine coupled to a once again beautiful Allison transmission, which are very well renowned for transmissions for vehicles like this, XTG 4414 Alpha cross drive transmission. The all welded aluminum armor, aluminium armor, turret at the rear of the hull has a square hatch in each side that opens to the rear and twin doors in the turret rear. The commander is seated on the right hand side of the turret and has a cupola that can be traversed 360 degrees and a single hatch cover that opens to the rear and an M27 day scope. There is a 50 caliber M2 machine gun that is pintle mounted on the front of the cupola. The gunner is seated on the left side of the turret and has a square single piece hatch cover that opens to the right. The twin doors at the rear of the turret are provided for ammunition resupply. Mounted at the rear of the hull on each side of the hull door is a large spade that is manually lowered to ground charge before firing. They are normally deployed only when firing top charges, which basically means the biggest explosive round that they can fire. The torsion bar suspension on either side consists of seven dual rubber tire road wheels with the drive pocket at the front and the idle at the rear. There are no track return rollers and the tracks are single pin center guide type with replaceable rubber pads. The M109 is fitted with night vision equipment as standard, but sadly does not have nuclear, biological and chemical warfare protection as standard from factory. The vehicle can be fitted with an amphibious kit consisting of 9 airbags, 4 on each side and 1 on the hull at the front. This just makes me giggle a little bit because seeing one of these things cross a river on its own steam would just be hilarious to see. The bags are inflated from the vehicle which can then propel itself across the river on tracks at a maximum speed of around 4 miles per hour. The main armament is the 155mm 126 howitzer with the 127 mount and a fume extractor with a large muzzle brake. The recoil system is hydropneumatic and the breech block is of a well and step thread type. Gun elevation and depression and turret traverse are hydraulic with manual controls for emergency use. There is a fire control equipment system that allows for direct fire. The telescope M118C can actually allow the gun to fire at a magnification of 4 times and a 10 degree field of view. There's also a panoramic telescope, the M117, for indirect fire and the gunner's quadrant M1A1. Currently there is going to be an upgrade to the M109A7 and it's the latest upgrade for this vehicle. Formerly this system was known as the M109A6 PIM or Paladin Integrated Management and the first prototype was unveiled in 2007. Upgraded artillery systems have a new automated loader and some components of the cancelled Crusader and NLOSC. The US Army plans to obtain a complete fleet of 580 M109A7 howitzers and the same number of associated armored ammunition support vehicles. Low rate production deliveries were expected in 2015 and full rate production is planned to finish in this year. As with most self propelled guns nowadays, the vehicles are accompanied by an ammunition vehicle, the M992 Field Artillery Ammunition Support Vehicle, otherwise known as the FAS-V, is built on the chassis of the M109 series howitzer. It's also referred to as the CAT, or the Carrier Ammunition Tract. It is going to be replaced by the M548 Supply Vehicle, unlike the M548, it is armoured. The ammunition vehicle has no turret, but has a taller superstructure to store 95 rounds with the corresponding number of powders and primers. There is a maximum of 92 conventional rounds, 45 in two racks, and three M712 copperhead rounds. So there you have it guys, the beautiful M109A6 to A7 Paladin self-propelled gun. Honestly guys, I feel like this vehicle has earned its time in the history books in being a fantastic piece of artillery equipment. Do I think it's time to completely renew the vehicle and the new chassis? It's hard to say. Honestly, self-propelled guns are one of those very difficult topics for me because I totally approve of them and think we require them, but I really do think that there are a lot better ways of doing what these young gentlemen are doing here in loading this gun. 
There's a lot more efficient, lean ways of being able to get those rounds in the tube, and it just seems extremely primitive for what we do nowadays in a combat environment to be having so many people operating around a machine like this that can really be simplified by, you know, automatic loaders and such. Now, I know you guys hate me um, siding towards the automatic loader world, and I myself, you know, for tanks, am still on the manual loading side. But for a gun like this that really has no massive risk um, of being engaged at the time, automatic loading seems very, very practical in this kind of scenario for artillery that can basically sit in position, fire and move again. That's not hitting against the M109 Paladin. I do still think it's an extremely capable gun system and clearly with that 155mm gun, along with the extended range ammunition, this is able to put some powerful punches down onto the battlefield when required. At the end of the day, that's all it's really there for, is to support the troops at the front, and really, this vehicle is doing that wholeheartedly. I must admit, I would have loved to have seen these things on operational tour in Afghanistan, sadly I did not, um, but it would have been cool to see these things flying around. I don't really think they're as big as some of the other artillery pieces that are out there in terms of chassis size, but that's not really what makes a vehicle, is it? The only thing that has let me down in this vehicle with the research that I did is its NBC environment uh, protection not being available. I'm not sure why and how that came to be, and maybe there is an upgrade or a new information that I'm not aware of to allow that to be the case, but considering this vehicle was primarily designed in most respects uh, to be attacking against the Russians in the Cold War, it seems like it's a no-brainer to have a vehicle like this that's in the background potentially getting counter battery art artillery fire put on it without NBC environment protection. That seems very, very weird to me. Um, but overall, guys, we all know this gun very, very well, and those who have served on it, thank you so much for your service. And honestly, I hope it does continue to serve for a while to come, and maybe it does have even more juice to squeeze out of it, so we can get even more range and, and firepower out of this bad boy. Anyway, guys, I really appreciate you stopping by and watching today's video. hope you learned a little bit about it, or if not, then you just enjoyed the absolutely awesome footage of these boys slamming rounds downrange. Once again, please check out my Patreon account, it'd be much appreciated. Like I said, YouTube is just screwing over our content creators nowadays, and it's just a bitter pill to swallow. Also, I am on Facebook, so feel free to hit me on Facebook with the like, and leave me a comment. I want to know what you think of these videos. All the best, guys. Thanks again, and bye-bye.